Sometimes it's the remote, small corners of the earth that open our hearts up to learning more about the world. From iconic to remote, islands have a special way of doing that. Today, we're exploring mainland Japan's southern islands. Around the world, people have a fascination with islands. Some people flock to them for vacation. Some go for the beaches. Some for the mountains. Some for community and that small town feeling. Some are looking for liveliness and others for rest, relaxation, and a bit of solitude. And some, like us, seek them out for adventure. Earth's natural islands all come to life through tectonic forces and volcanic eruptions below the surface. It's fascinating that Japan itself is made up of over 6,000 islands. Today, you'll get a taste of the southern Japan islands, Kushu Island, Yakushima Island, Oshima Island, and Shikoku Island. You'll find in the countryside of Japan, the people are really, really nice. They, everyone's greeting you on the street, they're saying hello, they're, even if they don't speak English, they're trying. Um, there's a lot of local foods here to eat. Every little section that you go to will have a, new, a different kind of pickle, a different kind of fish, a different way to make sushi. It's a really exciting place to, to travel and to eat. Which island is he talking about? We'll just have to wait and see. Let's explore. We're starting our adventure on the third largest island in Japan, Kushu. We'll explore the mythical volcanic mountain and all of its unique local experiences and outdoor adventures. Kushu is an island located in the southwest of Japan and known for its warm climate. Kushu is the ideal location to see hot springs, active volcanoes, and to try local food. On Kushu, we'll first explore the Takachiho region, just about in the center of the island's mountains. There is a Satoyama ecosystem present here, basically a traditional rural landscape that was once typical throughout most of Japan, one where farming and forested mountains coexist where the locals live. We'll see this as we explore the island. Takachiho is famous in mythology. It's said to be where the ancestors of the Japanese emperor descended from heaven. You're walking your way to the stone bridge that connects over the water as we look at Takachiho Gorge. This deep gorge was created by lava from Mount Aso, which we'll be cycling later. It had a large eruption that happened in ancient times. It created a caldera and its lava reached Takachiho. Over the years, the stream of water carved the deep Takachiho Gorge Valley that we see today. Grab your trekking poles, it's time for a hike. We're going roaming along the Kiritachigoe Trail, which leads to Mount Ogi. This trail follows the ridges of four mountains in the central Kushu Mountains that stretch from north to south. This 16 kilometer trail spans the ridge of the Kiritachi Mountain Range and served as a lifeline to villages deep in the mountains. It's said that in Japan's last civil war, the defeated party used it as an escape route to a nearby village. The limestone-rich area we're hiking is a more rugged, off-the-beaten-path experience. Around 1,000 years ago, people and horses began walking through Kiritachi Goe. This eventually pushed down the road creating the path we're walking today. あの、
あるいは山に持ち込んでビールを飲んだその日本のビールの一番最初の頃の瓶が出てきたりとかですね、まあ、あの人々が暮らした跡が残ってたりとかですね。We've made it to the peak of Mount Ogi. You're rewarded with the views of the peaks and the valleys below. Next up, we're e biking around the outer rim of Mount Aso. Mount Aso is one of the world's largest volcanoes and remains active this day. Mount Aso is nicknamed Sleeping Buddha because it resembled just that. You can see the daunting power and impressive bounty as you cycle along. So we went off road, first of all, in places, the grasslands of Aso. d We didn't see anybody、uh, in the field. You feel the freedom, the air, and I think those bikes are really worth actually climbing on them and see what you can discover. I actually learned that I, if I ever end up living in the mountain, I can cook my food in bamboo. And that's what we'll learn now. The Japanese have been cooking in this traditional way for thousands of years. Bamboo is actually a lot easier to cut than you would think. It is firm, but quite soft. As it cooks over the fire, the bamboo oil mixes with the food inside, enhancing the flavors to create an unforgettable meal to enjoy in this special landscape. We've made a traditional local lunch of chicken, rice, and veggies with a salty, sweet soy sauce base. To drink, we're trying Kamiricha tea made with a roast and roll method. Just next door, the terraced rice paddies and tea fields are used as the land of shrines, which are the heart and soul of local residents. Next, we're visiting a shiitake farm, one of the ingredients in our lunch today. The owner, Mr. Shimojo Rayusuke, Has a unique way of cultivating them. Bokugasaibaisteru, ビタミン D をですね多く含むと言われておりますでビタミン D がとカルシウムのですね吸収を良くしたりと、えっとえー、昔からですねあの万能の薬というか、えっと、健康には、えっと、味もですねあの健康にも良いと言われております And now we taste nature's bounty These shiitake mushrooms are rich and meaty and also pretty expensive I hope you're enjoying your farm fine dining Now that we've had a snack, it's time to check out the lava tunnels formed about 3,000 years ago near the Komezuka area. We're stepping over the moss covered rock to enter the lava tunnel. That's because volcanic gas and air created holes in the tunnel where water can get in, which allows moss to grow. Lava tunnels are underground passageways that were formed by the lava flows themselves. They carried the hot lava great distances underneath the surface of the earth. What you see now is what gets left behind when the supply of lava flow stops or gets diverted in another direction. Now that we've explored Kushu from below the surface to high above, it's time to hop over to our next island, Yakushima. Yakushima is the 13th largest island in Japan, located in southern Kushu and known for its wildlife and cedar forests. Yakushima is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The island is more remote and less populated and has a laid back feeling about it. We continue our way through the beautiful Yakushima Island as we embark on a laurel virgin forest walking journey. Yakushika deer weave their way through the trees, while birds and frogs perch and hop across branches, providing a glorious soundtrack together with the small, round Yakuzaru monkeys found throughout the forest. Climbing our way over crunching leaves and fallen camellia trees, we admire the roots of fallen trees that the earth is regenerating again, utilizing their nutrients to create more life. The trail leads us down to the ocean. The sea is a clear turquoise blue, 
just as bright as the green trees that surround it. Along the coastline, there is plenty of shade to relax and have a quiet lunch as quiet observers in the landscape. We sit and enjoy our meal as we discuss the beauty saturating our senses. Now that we've walked the forest, we're going to Yakasugi Cedar Workshop. Inside, they are making all types of product from cedar. Everything from soap to printed scarves to earrings and keychains, all inspired by the beautiful cedar trees of the island. Well, um, we love to make the best use of the limited resources and continue to make our products that will remain even after 100 years. And now we attend a workshop to learn how to craft our own souvenir that symbolizes the natural riches of the island and creates a memory to take home with us. Today we're making a flower vase. It can be quite challenging to smooth the wood properly. The polishing is a bit easier. The wood grain just naturally shows up. It was very exciting. I've never polished a piece of wood and smoothed it. So it was very exciting and each piece of wood had a unique shape and pattern and I think mine is very beautiful. Now that we've finished our souvenir, let's get back outside. Yakushima is a famous island for climbing, but in the clear Kurio River that flows from Mount Kuromi, travelers can also try stream climbing. Climbing up river through the rocks is similar to canyoning. It might feel as if you are jumping a little out of your comfort zone on this adventure. We climb our way upstream through the calm and clear water among the giant rocks that have been smoothed and polished by the flow of water and time. It's childlike fun jumping in from the rocks above. We are reaching the top of the waterfall where we stop for tea and snacks among the remote beauty of this landscape. After our break, time to try a natural slide. We'll end with a relaxing float through the calm water that takes you back downstream. Let yourself feel the blessings of water along the way. The Shochu factory, Homboshuzo, on this island has a mellow taste because of the abundance of soft water. Shiochu is not well known globally, but it is a famous distilled liquor in Japan. It is unique and unlike most other alcoholic drinks. The base ingredients usually include sweet potato, barley, rice, buckwheat, and sugarcane. When shiochu is made, it is distilled unlike sake, which is fermented, then aged in either a barrel, ceramic pot, or tank. This factory uses traditional ceramic pots, called kame. After our refreshing shiochu, it's time to hop to the next island, Shikoku. Shikoku is the smallest of Japan's major islands in southwest Japan. You'll be lured in by the translucent blue waters of its rivers and seas. Shikoku is also the least developed of Japan's main islands, perfect for the adventurous traveler. In the center of Shikoku, you'll find Mount Ishizuchi. The dramatic peak is the remnant of an ancient caldera. In today's adventures, you'll get a great mix of mountains, rivers, and the mighty sea. We're taking a ride through Dogo, Japan's oldest spa town. Its history dates back over a thousand years. The famous bathhouse, built a hundred years ago, is being restored so it can last another hundred. It's fun to take a rickshaw around town to see the elegant architecture of the Meiji period from 1868 to 1912. Before we leave Dogo, we're stopping at Hana Himero, a geisha tea house. They're going to tell us about their work now. So this lemon's on Taisho Shokara え、昭和の初期に掛けましてはですね、え、1300人、1300名ほどの、え、芸妓さんがいてたんですけれども、やっぱりもう、あの、
どんどんどんどん減っていきまして今はもう本当に数少なくこのまあ提灯にいるぐらいの人数しか残ってないんですけれども、はい、そうですねもう私は大学に行っていたので大学を卒業して少しお仕事をしている時にあの女将と。出会いまして、はい、そこから見習いの見習いに入らせてもらって、うん、舞妓を得て今稽古にならさせていただいております。はい。そうですね。もう今ねどうしても、うん、あ絶対必要というあの存在ではないかもしれませんけれども、まああの稽古と。言いますのはもうあの所属と言いますか入門してから、はいえっと、日本の伝統的な文化をですねやっぱり三味線であったりとかあと日本舞踊であったりとか、うんえー、お茶やお花に至るまでそういったあの日本の伝統的なものを身につけてでお客様の前に出ますのでやっぱりあのなんですかね日本文化の,あの伝道師と言いますか、はい、それを伝えていくにはあの必要な存在ではないかなというふうに思います。It's time to head off on our cycling journey on the neighboring islands of Oshima and Omishima. We start from a cycling base on Omishima Island in the middle of the Shima Namikaido. We cycle to Oma Yazumi Shrine where we pray for a safe journey. We're crossing the Shima Nami Kaido to Shikoku, looking at the island studded inland sea below. Cycling over the suspension bridge feels like you're flying over the water below. The Seito Inland Sea was once home to maritime clans, pirates, though they were actually more like a coast guard. There are so many Murakami、uh, families here, then everybody says our ancestor is the Murakami pirates, Kaizoku,、mm-hmm. Murakami Kaizoku. Then, I am one of that. Then I used their, sorry, I don't know how to say in English, I had a specialist、mm. to I mean, investigate the ancestor. Then the answer was that our ancestor is Murakami Kaizoku, the historical. It's not pirates, but it is said that pirates, because they don't actually rob. The robbery is the main work for the pirates in the general I mean, knowledge. Mm-hmm. But the, what they did was more like gatekeeper and also guiding. Like the, there are so many I mean, merchandise ships,、mm. I mean, the cargo in the ancient time of Japan around here, Seto Naikai Sea, Inland Sea. Then they kept their safety from other pirates and also the, yeah, they guided because the tide here is the completely different from、uh, any other place in the world. It's really, really fast. And then it's really dangerous. So, and also, there are too many、uh, islands, but some islands are hidden islands. When the tide is high,、mm. we can't see that. When the tide is low, we can see that. If they don't know that, it's going to be a big accident for the ships. And、uh, so, they help to guide to them to the right way. You can look down at its swirling waters and whirlpools of the Seito Island Sea. Let's hop on a boat and check them out from another perspective. We're taking a fast boat out to Noshima, an island fortress from where the Murakami clan controlled the passage of ships through the inland sea. When the captain turns off the engine, we can feel the power of the current that protected the pirate fortress back in the day. From the islands, we can see Mount Ishizuchi looming above. That's where we head next on e bikes. We are now at the foot of Mount Ishizuchi, the highest mountain in Shikoku. And we are ready for our e biking adventure. Let's ride. The climb up to Ishizuchi through Omogo River Valley is challenging. E bikes help ease the experience for every level of active traveler. We have a nice long ascent by paved road that winds up through deciduous woodland before emerging above the tree line at 1,500 meters of altitude. Here, strangely shaped peaks rise above slopes cloaked in dwarf bamboo. We're crossing over bridges with rocky rivers below. You can hear the cicadas as you ride. 
Ishizuchi has such a high altitude that it's often covered in a beautiful hazy mist. At the Tsuchigoya rest stop, we're greeted by mountain priests blowing conch shells and receiving a traditional Shinto blessing at the Ishizuchi Shrine. The shrine holds over 1,500 years of history. For lunch, we're having soba noodles. It's a hearty meal. Hunting is a way of life here. And this dish is typical in Shikoku's mountainside communities. Let's go on our way. We're now traversing the mountain on the UFO line, a ride that's on every Japanese cyclist's bucket list. As you ride this road, you see why it gets its next name, Yuho, which means majestic mountains. The road winds across the shoulder of Mount Ishizuchi, revealing high peaks. Oh, we just did two days of wonderful cycling, uh, and we started on the island chain, and that was really nice. We got to see islands and ocean, and then the next day, we're in the mountains. And this is the great thing about part, uh, cycling in this part of Japan, is that you can ride the ocean one day and the mountains next, and it's so completely different. It's like riding in two different countries. It's really amazing. The vast views over Shikoku put in perspective just how small you are in this verdant landscape. You can even see the Pacific Ocean as you peer off into the deep distance. Let's get off the bike and into the beautiful water we've been seeing all along our journey. Time to sup, stand up paddleboard that is. Filtered through the limestone of the mountain, the Niyoto River is the cleanest river in Japan flowing from Ishizuchi all the way down to the Pacific. The river's pure, translucent water gives it a brilliant turquoise tint. The locals call it Niyoto Blue. And uh, Kochi Niyoto River is uh, one of the clearest uh, rivers in Japan and also a uh, very safe river. We're going on a four kilometer tour down river today. You can sup here in all four seasons, each with a changing landscape. Get ready to curve along the river bends. The river changes quite a bit. It can be deep, calm at points to a bit more challenging paddle at others. There are even some shallow rapids too. Look closely and you can see big river fish and many birds along the river. You can also just float down leisurely on your back with your feet up. The paper industry has a long history in this area. In the town of Ino, you can find the Ino Paper Museum, where you can learn more about how washi paper is still made here by hand today. Washi paper is a traditional Japanese paper made by hand from local materials. The mulberry trees and glue-bearing vines that grow along the Niyoto River are an essential part of the process for making this traditional paper. It was introduced in Japanese culture more than 1,300 years ago and typically used for book covers because it's so durable. The tank is filled with a goopy mixture of water, mulberry fibers, and glue. You'll be surprised that the method is actually quite sophisticated. You take a tray, divide it into segments, and dip it in the tank, where you move it back and forth, kind of like panning for gold. This repeated movement allows the fibers to align in several directions. That's what makes washi paper so strong. The paper goes into a press to flatten it and squeeze out the moisture. Then it's laid on a heater to dry. The same method can be used for a variety of different sizes of washi paper. This woman has been making paper her whole life. She's making larger sheets of washi paper. Mm. Uh, no. トサワシ工芸村というところがありますけど、そこで本当にそのまあもう人間国宝になられた浜田佐治夫さんっていう方のまああの土佐天狗城出場代表的な和紙を継がれてる方のお孫さんがねもうあの後を継いでやってられてます
その綺麗で水が豊富ということで、まあ、栄えたという。原理もそうですその綺麗な水もそうやし、うん、で中山間地っていうかねその原料がこう育つその条件がこう整えてたっていう。The water from the Niyoto River is an essential ingredient in many things here. Another is in creating the excellent sake brewed in Kochi. We're visiting Kame Izumi Brewery now, which was founded in 1897. An operation of just eight people, the master brewer, Saibara Kazuhito, is the fifth generation to run the business. He begins by telling us where the water comes from to make the sake. そこの地下水が結構来てるんじゃないかなと思ってます。特徴はというかまあモットーはですね、美味しい楽しい面白いをモットーに高知県産の米、酵母、水にこだわりながらバレエティー豊かなお酒を醸しています。でまあ端的に言うと香りが高くてキレがいいというのが神井の特徴です。From iconic to off the beaten path. We've explored some epic islands today, which are wildly formed from the Earth's crust. We climbed in caves, trekked forests, cycled mountains, and rode the wild waves from the river to the sea. But adventure isn't just about climbing peaks and cycling mountains, it's sharing cultural experiences with locals who call these places home. It's going to a place with an open mind, meeting locals and learning how their environment and history has shaped the way they live. And leaving more connected to each other and our planet. That's what adventure travel is.